Voted on the polls of clubs in deep trouble, Bordeaux won yeah. over teams like Everton. I mean, they must be really in trouble. Well, I must admit, I am surprised because when you said about Bordeaux and the, why we was going to do Bordeaux, I, I didn't think they were in that much trouble until I looked at the league table and I thought, whoa. Yeah, I think a are. big factor in that is a big football channel called HTIC7s, who covers quite a lot of uh, teams in peril, did a video on Bordeaux the week that we did the poll. All oh, right. Yeah. So I think a lot of people have watched that and yeah. gone, oh, Bordeaux need yeah. help. Uh, they are currently, as we're recording this, slap bang bottom of the league in Ligue 1 and they don't look like they're going to no. be rescued. I um, mean they are classed as one of the most successful French teams. Yeah, yeah. So over the years you know, since they were since they were formed really. So. Yeah, six league titles that we yeah. can see there, four French cuts, three Coupe de la Ligues. One of the most successful clubs like you mentioned uh, in French history. So, I mean, they are predicted to finish in eighth place in in the league. They they aren't, I don't think they have a lot of money to be fair. And I think that's where the problem's starting yeah. to lay because yeah. if we take a look at our finances, uh, especially in like projection across future seasons, it goes down and down and mm -hmm. down. So it's gonna rely on a lot of things. And we do have 31 million pound in debt, but the original debt was 45 million. So. Yeah, that's going to be paid out for a long period of time. And there's not a lot of money in the French League. No. You have to rely on going quite far in Europe. Uh, and you need money to get there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, And, and really, to take on PSG, it yeah. ain't, ain't happening, is it? No, you either need no. really rich owners like a Monaco or yeah. a Lyon, or you need probably the best youth academy, which Bordeaux has a good youth academy. Zidane, not the greatest. Zidane Zidane came from there. He did indeed. Yeah, yeah he came through. I, mean, I, think, I think he's even on the uh, the icons list down here yeah. as the first player down there. Um, but not a lot of like legends and like two players that I've never even heard of. And I think you know the club's not got that great a history where Marouane Shamak is a favoured <laughs> personnel. <laughs> so there we go. Their fierce rivals, of course, Toulouse, which is a local rivalry. Yeah. Um, that's all to do with the river. There's a, apparently there's a big river that goes down in between through, them, and both teams are on either, either side of the river. Yeah, oh, fair enough. The River Gorony, I think it's called. Pretty much like Plymouth and Cornwall. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Split by they, the River Tamar. They Tamer. do classes. Um, my, my one of my French teams that I like, Nats, is, is one of their rivalries as well. Yeah, yeah. That's where they've got a good arch rivalry as well. There, so yeah, it does say down there local rivalry. Yeah. Nats is other rivals down there, just not as fierce as the Toulouse one. No. So let's take a look then at transfers because I. Did have a little bit of money but just not a lot because on transfer history if we go for the players that i signed so i signed one free agent victor clayson was the first one he's a swedish international 50 caps for sweden he's a Good. free agent at the start of the game so and in a, in a position where i think we definitely need a little bit of strengthening and he plays everywhere across the midfielder up top if it's we need him to so good squad player for yeah. sure uh did want high wages though considering what we're paying other players but considering we got him a free free agency like his value is high mm. that's good uh, but he is 29 i guess and then this sign-in which i think is probably a really good smart sign-in because it could last us throughout the whole of the rebuild is james suen sion something like that anyway he's spanish 24 years of age really good center midfielder uh, that we have picked up from the real madrid youth academy Ooh, he was playing good. at huesca yeah in the first division uh it's 2.1 million pound he's transfer listed because he's he goes out of contract at the end of the season so to pick him up at such a cheap cost i think is really good one thing that they have managed to do quite well in this is use the loan market look how many players we have here on loan yeah. there are a couple that are already joining uh, on permanent deals, but we also have a couple of deals. Uh, Yasin Adli used to be, uh, who's from the uh, Bordeaux team, then he went to Milan and was alone back for a season. Then if we look at somebody like Anel Ahmed Hozic, one of the best centre backs for Wonder Kids on the game, we do have an option to buy a 3.8 million pound. That is ridiculously cheap. Yeah, you've got to take that, yeah. But Will they give us the money? Yeah. That's the question. Mm. Um, and then if we look at the other players that we have, uh, Timothy Pembele is another one from PSG. He's on loan with an optional future for a £10 million. Again, if we can afford to, so that great. Be a bit too much for us, really. For yeah. Now. And the, the thing is that I don't like about like loan to buys, especially if you don't have a lot of money, is that next season you spend money and you haven't improved. No, that's right. Because you've got exactly the same player as what you had. <laughs> so tactically, then, this is what we're going to look like this season. We're going for what we were playing at Derby 4 1 3 1 1. So it's very similar to what I think I've changed the tweet to a little few things. I just haven't saved it as a new tactic, to be fair. So you've got two wingers, a shadow striker. Niang is the poacher. Now, he's a really good striker slash he can also play on the wings uh he has some decent attributes especially that 15 finishing obviously but 
he does lapse quite a lot yeah in regards of like mentally um i yeah. remember when he come onto the His scene concentration is only 10. yeah <laughs> yeah it's like yeah. well hello yeah oh sorry yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's like that isn't it? he i remember when he burst onto the scene and he went to milan in football manager 12 i think it was he was amazing yeah because he was like a, a really young french wonder kid so he's going to be our main focal point of the attack we do have some quality players so if i if I show you this on uh, pick without restriction down here on best 11, this is what we would be playing week in, week out uh, should we have like no red cards or anything like that, obviously. So that's what we would be looking like. Sione goes in the Roman playmaker role. We have played a few games as well. Let's take a look at the schedule. It's been a little bit topsy-turvy, but I've got to say I'm actually happy with it because Clermont is a game we should be winning. Yeah. 3-0. We, we made him look silly, to be fair. Very comfortable win. Uh, great victory there. Then we lost to uh, Dimitri Payet, Marseille. At Marseille, always going to be a difficult game. Uh, they have a little bit more money than us. Then Angers, another relegation team. We beat them 4-1. It's a good win. So in regards to what they're doing like in real life, we're beating the teams around us. Mm. And then Nice, who I think are one of the most underrated teams in the in the league. Good draw away from home. A good draw away from home. Yeah. And like they've got like Casper Dolberg, Amin Gouri, mm. some fantastic players and they're rich too. So yeah, not a bad start, I wouldn't say. Uh, and we are finding ourselves in fifth place. If we can finish between fourth and sixth and get into like the Euro Cups, yeah. bring a little bit of money. money. Yeah, that's what you need. That's what we need yeah. in, the, in this first couple of seasons because money Monaco, PSG, Lens, uh, not Lens, Leo and Leon, they're always going to be difficult to yeah. overcome. Okay then, let's simulate this first season and see how we get on. First season then, fourth place. Fourth, fourth place. Take that, every yeah. day of the week. Uh, Rennes are the surprise package of the league. They finish in second behind PSG, yeah. who run away with it, 96 points, but that's expected, obviously. Uh, we finish on 69 points. That's a naughty number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, below us, I mean, Lyon, down in eighth place. Marseille, down in ninth. Yeah. Lille, they used, and then they just won the league. They're down in 11. <laughs> so we've done ever so well. I think we've actually overperformed, but this is obviously where the complications start to lay. Can we keep the team yeah. around? Because obviously that's the problem we're going to have. So competitions then, we're the runners up of the French Cups as oh. well. Well, we got to a final and finished fourth, so. We did. What a season that is. Right, finished? Yeah. <laughs> Lucky we lost. Did it get any better? Lucky we lost. Uh, I, I did see that on, on the uh, league table, they must have won something, so I gathered that. Angers, that's a poor loss, yeah. isn't it? 2 0 as well. I mean, we'll take a look at like the stages because one of us has managed to beat PSG, so that's obviously a shock. Um, if we go by the tree down here, who beat PSG? That's what we want to know. Maybe it wasn't one of us, maybe it was somebody else, and then we'd beat them because it doesn't look like we. We did. We beat Pau FC, Nancy and Lorion before we beat Brest in the semi-final. Uh, and Monaco, actually Monaco was the semi-final. So PSG was in the semi They lost to Lille on penalties, who then was knocked out by Angers on penalties. Mm -hmm. So not a great start for PSG. And that must be Pochettino must, still. It have, is. They must have played a weak inside there. And yeah, just, uh, and just absolutely thought flopped gonna, it. Thought they were going to win easily. And but they did win a Champions League this season. Under Poch. Under Poch as well. Get him at United. Yay. No, don't. <laughs> don't, please. No, God, no. Uh, let's take a look at the goals then, because Niang obviously was our main main striker. He only scored 18 in 39 games. Is that good, do you think? I mean, it's not bad, is it? It's just under a goal every game. Yeah. Mm. yeah. 13 from uh, Huang Yui Zhou, and Zerkane got himself 11 goals as well. Yasin Adli, we're going to lose him. He was probably our best performer, a 7.36 average rating with 12 assists and 8 goals. Mm. We're going to start losing these players. Uh, if we take a look at our finance as well, budget of zero. Next season's budget, £1.95 million. <laughs> and if we want to get those well, deals done, we have to get them that? done by July. So... I yeah. think we we won't even be able to get an El Ahmed Hosic, who's gonna, like three million. We're going to be in trouble, aren't we? I think so too, yeah. Okay, we'll go forward to the next season then, uh, and we'll take a look at the transfers. So we did make some sign-ins. However, the ones that you see the top three here were already done deals. So that's where a lot of our budget's going. It's going on future transfers with players who are already at the club. Yeah. Or already we signed and then have gone out on loan. For instance, this guy here, Ellis, is a new sign-in, Honduran. We didn't have him last season, 
I don't think. But, I mean, we did actually. He's, but he played 29 games. I'll tell a lie. Uh, he was there. But we signed him now for £6.5 million. Pound. That's a lot of money. That yeah. could have got Anel Ahmed Hozic, who's going to be a centre-back for the rest of the, you know, for the rest of the series. We don't have that. So... The only signing I actually made was Alex Calado from Barcelona. Like I mentioned, we didn't have a lot of money at all, but for the fact that we only paid like under two, 1.5 million pounds for this player, yeah. this caliber of player from La Masia, Barcelona's Youth Academy at 23 years of age, I think it's he's a not, steal. He's not bad, yeah, he's not bad. Plays bit, a number of different positions I'm a as bit well. worried about the um, the work rate only being seven. Yeah, that's one thing, out of all the things that I really look for yeah. in a player, that's one thing I did, you know, it's sort of... It's a bit of, worrying, isn't it? That's, yeah. That's, that's a bit like, like, like a concentration. He just, just drifts off the game. Yeah, know? yeah. And work rate is like, yeah. ah, well. Yeah. So that's probably his only real weakness for this position that we need him to. But he is a four-star caliber player out of our players. So, I mean, we've got to be a little bit hopeful. The fact that we barely spent anything on him uh, is not bad whatsoever. So tactically, I think we, we stick with what we had, but this time we solidify a couple of players in their positions. For instance, Victor Clayson, who didn't play a lot last season at all, even though we signed him on a free 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 transfer, I wanna make sure we give him game time. Like the start of the season for him. Exactly. When we do give him game time, Thank three you. goals, four assists. Well, hey, I'm happy with that. Yeah, whereas he only played five games, they're all off the bench last season. Yeah and got nothing, but that's because the assistant manager was running the team. So this time round, uh, I want to secure him in a position with Collado playing out on that left-hand side. Finances then, we're not looking too great at all. The overall balance is not fantastic at all, but we are in Europa League. We have been given a very difficult draw though of Napoli and Wolfsburg. With Sparta Prague, who can cause problems. Yeah. Um, so that will be a difficult draw. We'll hopefully be able to qualify for it, but I don't fancy our chances. No. Third place will take us into Euro League two, obviously. Yeah. So it's still a competition. I think, I think that's our best. Hope. Yeah. I think, really. I agree. Uh, as you can see from the league table, though, we've won three games so far. So let's take a look at those games. Lille, 4 1. Great win. Yeah. Uh, Nims, 3 2 victory. Not bad at all. Away from take home any, as well. Yeah, take any result away from home. Yeah. Monaco was a 2 0 loss. We Didn't know that's that, going to be yeah. a difficult game. A 3 2 victory against Lorient. Not bad. They've got a very good striker, Terra Murphy. He scores yeah. quite a lot of goals. And then Angers. It's a bad result. Can't beat them at all, can we? But we, we did get a player sent off after 20, 20 minutes, minutes, which obviously has cost us there. Yeah. We were one new up at the time as well. Though. Yeah. So it pretty much shot ourselves in the foot with that one. Yeah. Um, but like we mentioned with this club, like six league titles. First one was in 1950. They had a very dominant spell in the 80s. And then they've won... Recently in '99 and 2009. Yeah. Do you have anything on this club? Like, well, actually, they were they were formed in 1881 as a sports club. Okay. Not as a football team. So they they started off doing gymnastics, shooting, swimming, rowing. But the football team didn't come along till 1910. They'd done a year's trial with it. Okay. And they didn't like it very much, um, so they ditched it. And then a few years later, in 1919, they actually went for it again. Brought it back. Yeah. And and then it stayed as like an amateur team with it with the sports club. And then they actually went professional in 1936. Oh wow! So even though they have 1881 on their badge. The yeah. bloody scammers making it look yeah. like they've been around for 150 years. They haven't. <laughs> it's nearly only 100 years. Yeah. But they actually played their first league professional game against Toulouse. Oh, they're, they're fierce rivals. Yeah. And they lost 3-2, oh. unfortunately. Yeah. So, but um, yeah, so they have been around a long time, but not as a football team, but as a club. Yeah. A okay. sports club. So. Well, they yeah. do have somewhat of a history. And obviously, like I mentioned, in the 80s, they were quite dominant. Let's simulate this season then. They've got four French Cups. Maybe we can add to that total after coming so close yeah. in season number one. So the second season then, we've dropped down into sixth place. Yeah, we've still got a European spot, so yeah. there's still money coming in. You, you and know. it's probably because of Europe. Yeah. And we're, to be fair, only three points behind what we finished on last season. Yeah. Uh, 66 points this time round. And if we take a look, obviously PSG still with 98 points. Those teams that struggled last season have pulled it back. Yeah. Leon. Marseille, Lille. Mm. All three of them back up there. Rennes dropped down into 10th place from 2nd, so it's a massive fall from grace for Rennes. So I'm actually not too displeased with how we've managed to... No. We've, we've managed to hang on. 
Surprised to see San Etienne going there. Uh, well, I get it. That's a bad season for them as well. That is very bad yeah. for San Etienne. Obviously, we've done a rebuild on them. One of my yeah. favorite rebuilds that we did. Yeah, it was good. That, that was that really one. enjoyed that one. Etienne Green still gets brought up yeah. from time to time <laughs> from what a, San Etienne. What a good goalkeeper. Good, good yeah, who, uh, who, who are called the Greens. Amazing story, that. So, yeah, not a bad season. We are in the EC2. Does it like Nice managed to win something? They, they qualify probably, for the Euro Cup. They probably beat us in the final. They probably won the cup. Uh, we, oh my God. We've reached the semi-final of the Euro Cup 2, which obviously is what Nice has won. So, fair play to them. They beat AC Milan in the final. How did AC Milan drop all the way down into that? Ooh, yeah. Because that, that must have mean they, they, yeah, they yeah. dropped out of something into that. Um, but yeah, Nice have won that. They beat Milan 3-0 in the final there. I mean, Gori getting a few. But yeah, like we mentioned, we finished in third place, dropped down into yeah. that competition. Uh, and the French Cup, we were knocked out in the ninth round by Nantes, who... Uh, PSG went on penalties against Lorient, so they're not doing too well, are no. they, really? Like, the league-wise, yeah, they're very dominant. They didn't win another Champions League. Poch is still there, but they have won their first cup only on penalties. I'm quite intrigued, then, by this uh, Europa League 2. They absolutely demolished a 6-1 on aggregate. Oh, wow. Well, we did come up against Besiktas. We took a trip to Turkey. We drew two all at home. One, two, one away from home. So that's, that's difficult to that's do. I love a result going yeah. away. Yeah, going to Istanbul and yeah. winning two, one. You don't want to go there, do you? After extra time as well. And yeah. by Niang, 110 minutes. <laughs> we uh, scored that. So 10 minutes left on the clock. So yeah, we've done we've done very well there. But look at the end of the season. Oh, that's where we lost it, though. Yeah, very difficult but, games, though. PSG, yeah. Lyon and Lille. Um, yeah. We're giving Some us... hard games there, aren't it? Yeah, absolutely. We did win the game that I would expect. The semi final win. started it like, really. We, we started yeah. losing. That's where we started losing and just couldn't get it back after that. No, we? that's it. You got a bit of a bad yeah. form, didn't you? Because this period here, you know, we only picked up one loss there against Marseille. And then in such a long we were, period of time. We were probably one of the top form teams of the, yeah, of the yeah. spell of the league, really. Let's take a look. We can take a look at past positions and see. I mean, yeah, yeah we were up fourth. Third place at one point, fifth place for quite a bit, long period. Uh, finished where we pretty much stayed a lot of the season, yeah. down in sixth place there. Uh, Squad-wise then, 12 goals were from Ellis. That's not a lot at all. No. Niang's only scoring 11. We are a striker missing, aren't we, really? Yeah, yeah and if we're, we're doing really well considering we're not scoring many goals. Absolutely, yeah. So. And Clayson, 16 assists in that shadow strike role. So he's done quite well. And 11 assists from Alex Calado with seven goals. Not bad for a player that we pay peanuts for, really. Yeah. So, yeah, we've got a few players coming back on loan as well. Uh, this guy here, but Bella Nuova, he was out on loan to Cal Caligari the first season. We brought him back. He's had a great season for us. He's one yeah. of our best performing players that last season. So I think next season... Oh, he was our best performing player. I think next season we need to build on this now um the trouble is like contract wise we've got a few players like look how many players are going out of contract yeah niang didn't want to resign joining nuns local rivals oh dear oh dear yeah um uh, he's gonna get a bit of stick in the next game isn't he? absolutely something that we need to consider though is we got the likes of sekumara youngster 20 years of age coming through the youth academy He's a very good player. He just needs game time. He got a little bit of game time last season. He played 10 games from starting, 12 games off the bench. Only got four goals, though, and two assists. And Josh Madger, do you remember the uh, Sunderland Till I Die Netflix series? Yeah, very good. Josh Madger, when he moved to Bordeaux. Yeah. They had problems then, and obviously, in that series. He was there. So yeah. uh, he was out on loan last season at Stoke, after he's also been on loan at Fulham. Uh, he played 20 games this season, 16 starting, only got five goals. So we've got these strikers, they're just not really scoring yeah. much. Maybe it's the system. So, okay, we'll go on to season number three. Now, the first signing in the door, we pinched a player from Nice, which I think is great, and he's Calvin Steng. So Fort Manager fans are going to love this guy because yeah. he was very good a couple of years ago. £4.5 million, almost half of what they paid for him. He had a very good first season, 10 assists. That season didn't play as much, so this season, we're giving him the game. One yeah. assist in two games so far for Calvin Stengs. Quality player, I think. Young Dutch as well. Uh, a lot to like about him. Good player traits. And that wasn't the only signing because we actually spent another £10.5 million after that. So they did give us a little bit of money. Mm. Not a lot, but a long We've period of time. we two seasons in Europe, so what more do you expect? Exactly that, yeah. Uh, but we are struggling at the back. So yeah. the first signing that we made was Luca Pellegrini, who is a left-back, very solid Italian left-back from Juve. Any, any left-back. Um, Defender. Defender. Yeah. 
Very you good player indeed. So he moved from Roma to uh, to to Ju that's Juve, by the way. I haven't done the name fix. So they're, right. they're zebra <laughs> yeah. uh, in this, and and because uh, license its reasons. And then also we signed Samuel Suarez, who is a goalkeeper from Benfica. Not going to be our goalkeeper just yet because Benoit Costil has signed a new deal. But he is like 38, I think. Benoit Costil. So it's only a matter of time in he's this only, rebuild. He's only 21, but ben, and he's 21. We're building a young squad. Exactly. Yeah. For all you Patreon members. Thank you very much to everybody who signed up to the Patreon. Five pound and you gain all the access to these save game files. If we build a team, we give you some challenges at the end of the video. You can carry it on for the next five years for just the cost of a pint. I know someone put on there as well to, to comment on uh, any sort of um, challenges that we set you, whether you do it or no, but we've had not much feedback coming back our we way. We haven't, so no. I've had like two you, messages. Yeah, if you, if you two take on the challenge, let us know how you get on. Yeah, so, absolutely. So we can, you know, put a word in or something like that, you know? Yeah, absolutely, in a future video. Yeah. Um, then, I think this is our best signing. It's from a club I've never even heard of. Racing White Darin Molenbeek. Never heard of them from Stadium. the Belgian League. So our stadium, isn't it? That is basically Basically, Kimberley Stadium. I've played at stadiums bigger than that. But £1.9 million for this player. I mean, 17, but look at his dribbling, his first touch. This is how I found him. So yeah. basically, I thought, oh, I need a really good striker. So I typed in 13 off the ball, 17, I think, no, I think 13 off the ball, first touch, and composure. I was looking for a striker with a good first touch yeah. and just hoping they had decent finishing. And then this guy came up because he's got 13 off the ball, composure with 17 first, first touch, touch and 17 dribbling. That's good. And it? I was like, whoa. And yeah. he has fairly professional personality, which is fantastic for developing in the future. Now look at his value, 39 to 45 million. Cool, that's a good buy then. Yeah, really? we picked him up for 1.9. So we've played in three games so far this season. He hasn't he hasn't like scored or assisted, but he is only a centre midfielder. Yeah. So we need to remember that as like an attacking centre midfielder. And we're training him now to get sport whenever possible. Train him in the Mazala on attack role because we've changed the formation as well. This is what we're playing now. We're going to a standard 4-3-3 with wing play. This is very basic, but I like it. Yeah. And I think this suits. This is what we need right now. Two Mazalas on attack in that midfield. They will help out on the wings, but they will also come back and help the DM in that central role. We've got two inverted wing backs. So they can bomb on forward to help the wingers, and of course, an advanced forward up front. If we take a look at the advanced forward role, we've got a few players who can play there, including Josh Madger, including Seiko Mara. So we haven't signed that striker. That's one thing that we didn't yeah. do this, this season, but I think we still have capable players who can play there. Josh Madger being the number one option for that role. And so far this season, it hasn't been great, but we have had to do two games in Europe, the qualifying stage, and I actually think we've overachieved here because Borussia Mönch and Gladbach are a very good team. They are, yeah. Uh, we beat them 2-1 away. So a massive result there. That's Josh Madger result. getting a brace. Really good result. And then we, we took them home, and we drew two all there. Albert Ellis managing well, were, to get a brace. They were two up after eight minutes, look. So yeah, we've done well there, really. Player. I'm happy with that. That's good. Angers are a team that we cannot beat. Oh, again? I know. 91st oh, minute. 91st minute. Come and we had a player on. sent off. Very again. frustrating. Uh, we did beat Lens in the league and we also lost to Havre, who I think are our newly promoted team. Uh, so let's take a look at competitions then because we've been given our Euro Cup 2 group and it has Leicester, Leicester. in it. St. Gallen. And then this team, Shakhtar. But they're from Belarus. Oh, right. Yeah, so it's a team that I've never seen before. No. So I was quite intrigued by that, that they've managed to uh, qualify for the Euro I'd, Cup too. I'd be disappointed we don't come second beyond Leicester, you know. I would too. Yeah, yeah we should be beating St. Gallen. Yeah. Um, and then in the league, of course, we've played three games. We're currently in 11th place. So financially then, we're still a little bit lapsed. Only £4 million. Projection isn't looking too great. So what we're doing in Europe is keeping us afloat, I think, yeah, financially. Yeah. Uh, and our debts and loans, we've got £36 million left, really. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going down, <laughs> which is, yeah, quite scary. Okay, on to Europe then. Let's try and get a little bit further and, you know, bring in a little bit more money again. Talk, talking to Europe, actually in 1996 in the UEFA Cup, they got to the final. Yeah, I mean, UEFA Cup, so the Cup Winners' Cup, isn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, they lost They lost over two legs to Bayern Munich. Um, the first leg, they lost 3-1 at home and lost 2-0 away. Oh, it's so, difficult. To, I mean, if you think that Bayern, Bayern Munich, Munich team, like two yeah. years later, was in the Champions League final. Yeah, definitely, yeah. So against so Manchester they, United. They have, you know, they, they, they've... they've uh, Got to a final, so just haven't can managed we, to lift Can we one do it yet. again? Can we do it again? Can, can we? we get to another final? Come on. All right, let's simulate this third season.
Well, unfortunately, we're dropped down into ninth place. Yeah. But. Yeah. But there's something beside our name, no? But we have qualified for the Euro Cup. Ooh. And how did we do that? How did we do it? Well, we were the winners of the French Cup. Get in. Yes. So domestically, we did all right. And we absolutely stuffed Leon in the final. 3-0. Yes. Josh Madger with a brace. And then our new player, Anquetti, obviously the 17-year-old, picking up a goal as well yeah. in the 16th. We were 3-0 up in 16 minutes. Oh, so we absolutely demolished that, yeah. them. No. 20 shots we had. A great XG. We just outplayed them. Completely outplayed them. And they have one of the best teams in the league. Absolutely with Dembele and Auer, Ivan Yusek, all really good players. Couldn't handle us. No. Could not handle us. I'll take that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to see our run if we manage to like overthrow other people as well. So because obviously we've if we've got there, we've overcome some massive clubs. So yeah. we beat Montpellier 3-1 there. We also beat Rennes on penalties. Good result. Chambly in the 10th round. So we avoided all the big clubs. That's what that's what you you need a little bit of luck in the cups, don't you? Yeah, Mets in the semi-final. Uh Leon actually faced Monaco in the quarters, I think, uh, and Marseille in the semi. So they had the harder side of it because Monaco PSG, beat yeah. PSG, yeah. uh, who only beat Leo on penalty. So we had easily the easiest side of the draw. We had all the bottom half of the club, all the bottom half of the uh, the league there on our side of the draw. We did very well to avoid all of those mm. big teams, really. So not bad at all. First round knockout stage by Salzburg in the Euro Cup 2. So we did qualify, like we mentioned. Yeah. Uh, we just could not get past Salzburg, who actually went on and beat Leicester, who was in our group. 3-0 in the final. Oh, you can't argue with that, can you? Now, they do have a very good team as well, Salzburg. Yeah. They're one of those teams that after like three seasons, if they keep some of their players, they're unbelievable. Mm. Um, so I want to see the group stage to see how we played and how we actually qualified. We did finish second in the group. We won points. four. That's good. We only lost to Leicester. Yeah. Uh, and we actually I'm... only conceded one goal against the Belarusian team. We would expect to lose against Leicester, were we? They're, they're yeah. you know, by far a better. They won all six. Better quality side. So they, they got the um, the money in there. Yeah. More money than we got. When we went to Leicester, they beat us 5-4. What a game that is. 5-4. Imagine going and you're going to score four goals away yeah. from home and you still lose. It's weird because we're, we're playing so much better away from home in Europe. I know, I yeah, yeah. That is. Yeah, it is strange, isn't it? Uh, maybe we just love travelling. Maybe it's because the, the other team are... Because the other team are at home, they open up a bit more and then lets us get in the right. Yeah, and lets them they, attack us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that could be the case, to be honest. So a decent season then. I actually quite like this. Although league-wise, very poor. Yeah. In the Cups, it seems to have done well. We've, mm. we've won the French Cup. It has brought us some success. Josh Madger with the most goals. 24 in 30... What's that? 36 starts? I'd accept that. Yeah, that's yeah. okay, isn't yeah. it? That is From that your main street, you bad. would accept that, yeah. Victor Clayson from the left-hand side has managed to pick up 17 goals. Not bad not, at not all. Bad, no. And Seiko Mara, 10 goals in only 11 starts with 12 appearances off the bench. You're not going to argue that, are you? No, it could be his time to shine. He's, he doesn't look like he's getting any better, but it looks like he's he's playing better yeah. than what he was previously. So, yeah. Calvin Stengs, his first season, first couple of seasons, hasn't been the greatest. Uh, he's done all right there, 14 assists. But Anquetti is a first season, considering he's only 18 years of age now. 12 assists, 5 goals. It's good. Yeah, and he does look like he's getting better. 18 now for dribbling mm. first touch. Could be a quality player. Vision 16 as well, that's good. Yeah, worth 61 million to 73 million pound. He's not the only player that we have as well, because coming through our youth academy, we've got a couple of fantastic players, including this guy, Joaquin Profacio. Uh, who is a, a right-handed player or a striker. He might not be good enough for us, but for Patreon members, he might be first team worthy because yeah. uh, he's only 17. He's Argentinian, but he's come through our youth academy. 18 million to 22 million pounds that he's now worth. Yeah. Season number four then, and we're still scraping by without going into debt just yet. Um, we still have a big debt though. So let's take a look at the transfers then because we have actually made some despite us not actually having any money. After last year where we actually spent quite a lot, this season we didn't. Um, we only spent £1.9 million but it was Brenner. Now this is a bargain that I could not turn down. He was yeah. transfer listed. We've seen him in previous rebuilds. I won recently I think where he was amazing for us and he might be the, the key. Yeah to us starting to score some goals. Hopefully, um, yeah. Brazilian as well, the number 10. 1.9 million pounds because he was transfer listed. He's had some fantastic seasons in the MLS. Started well. Yeah, an absolute cheat code really on this game. But I think this could be the best sign that we have made the whole rebuild. Bakayoko, bringing him back to France. Yeah. He's 30, so That's all right. he's still got a couple of years left. Yeah. 
as that defensive you know, centre midfielder. I say that centre, that centre midfielder, he just sit there, can he? He isn't going to do all the running around that, yeah. you know, that he would have done when he was a lot younger. He just sit there, you know, his experience. Yeah. That's what we need. He hasn't really played a full season for ages. No. Like, since his move to Chelsea, like Milan there with 30 or 32 games there for Napoli was probably his last time where he actually played a full season. Yeah. Other than that, like, he's barely, he didn't even play at all last season. Nothing. So he's going to be, he's going to take a while to get into the game, but I still think he's quality player. Yeah. Bakayoko bringing him into the club. It'll be for us, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Tactically, we have actually changed it. So we've gone a little bit more narrow up front. Now, if you remember rightly, this was our Monaco tactic, but I've changed a couple of the player roles in the uh, striker position. Pressing forward on support was very good for us uh, in that previous time though we used it. Seiko Mara is actually quite good at that in regards to playing on the left-hand side. That's what I've been using him this preseason. He's got one goal, but with a very high average rating. So I decided to keep him there throughout yeah. the whole season. Then we also have Anquetti, who when we signed to a new deal, asked to play an, a, an attacking playmaker or advanced playmaker. So he's going to play in that role. And Wivy has like good dribbling first touch. Obviously, when he gets forward, it kind of works out that well. So yeah. I don't want to disrupt him or, you know, annoy him. Signing into a new five-year deal, I think it's worth it just giving him the role that he wants to play. So other than that then, Bakioka will go into the ball-winning midfielder role. That, that makes sense to me. And James Sione, who we signed in the first season, is a very good centre midfielder who can play in that role there as a three-and-a-half-star player. So I think we're set up quite well. And schedule-wise, it's been a little bit... Mm. So we got absolutely Ooh. stuffed in the cup. 7-2. But it is PSG, of course. Yeah. Uh, a good win against Montpellier. A good win against Lorient, but a bad loss to Lens, 3-2. And then a loss to Monaco, which it's here or there, isn't yeah. it? It's, you expect it, especially when you go to Monaco. But we've been given our Euro Cup group. We are in a group with Leipzig, and we're also in a group with Genk and CFR Cluj I'm from say it again. Romania. I'll be disappointed if I don't come second again. Genk's going to be a difficult one, Yeah, but, you, um, but we should overcome them. If you win, your, win your home game, and we, we do play well away. Yeah. So you never know, do you? You just never know. Uh, Leipzig, I think, might be a little bit too tricky yeah, to overcome. I think they will be, yeah. they still got some quality players. Love that stadium. Yeah, beautiful stadium, isn't it? Yeah. I've seen a very funny thing about that stadium. So that stadium was where they hosted... Uh, World Cup match, I think it was a semi-final in 2006. And Zinedine Zidane, when he got took off, or I can't remember what it was, he went into the change room and kicked the door. And it left a stud mark on the Leipzig <laughs> change room door. Yeah. And they've kept it and they framed it. <laughs> they put a gold <laughs> frame around it and they've never replaced that door. Fair enough. Which is amazing, isn't oh, it? He's a legend, isn't he? Exactly. And yeah. only somebody like the Germans would do that, yeah. I think. Yeah, definitely, yeah. So just a, rem just a reminder, of, like, that was Zinedine Zidane who yeah. picked that, which is quite funny. <laughs> and obviously, it links to Bordeaux yeah. with Zinedine Zidane. Right, okay, let's simulate this fourth season. Fourth season, then we finish in fifth place. We have climbed up a little bit I from ninth. That. Get us, get us um, back in, I'm happy with that. Yeah, Monaco win the league though. 86 Ooh. points, despite Erlen Haaland being at PSG. Now, and Dusan oh. Vlahovic being at PSG. So the well, fact, you... Pochettino, Haaland and Vlahovic again. Do you remember last time? Yeah. In the last rebuild we did with Derby, he had Vlahovic and he had Haaland at Man City and he didn't win the league. And now he's doing it again at PSG. And they still got Neymar as well. They still got Neymar. What? And Messi. Yeah, Messi's still there as well. They yeah. have an unbelievable team and oh, yet look he at their cannot goal, win the league. Did you see their goal difference as well? Yeah, disgusting. Oh, Absolutely disgusting. 75 yeah. and yet they lose. They only lose three games and yet they still lose the league. Amazing really, isn't it? Fair play to Monaco. Oh. Like 86 points. Unbelievable. Brilliant. We were knocked out the 10th round by Nice in the French Cup. Quarter final exit by Leicester in the Europa League. That's good. It's not bad. Man United yeah. go on and win it against Bilbao. Uh, they've won it twice now, actually. So come on. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to celebrate the uh, Europa League. But yeah, not bad. Get knocked out 6 2, or 6 4, sorry, on aggregate to uh, Leicester, which means we beat, we them, beat them in them. the home leg. Yeah. In the away leg. We beat them in the away leg. Yeah, we lost 6 2 home. And lost 6 2 at home. Oh, that's gutting. That's very gutting. Ah, it's disappointing, isn't it? Because yeah. you think, like, if you overcome Leicester, you know, we could go all the way. We beat, obviously faced the Man United. And you think, this is it, we're in, aren't we? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's disappointing. Quarter final exit. All right, okay. Let's take a look at the squad then. 38 goals from Brenner. That's, that's what better. we're talking about. Yeah, that's that's much better, isn't it? 
We needed that. Yeah. Uh, Seiko Mara playing in the supporting role, 17. Josh Madger playing in the other supporting role, 11 with 14 assists. This is what we needed. And Sione also getting 14 goals from good center mid. Average of rating as well. There's some good ones as well there, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, Bellanova getting 13 assists with a very high average rating. So we're chipping in with assists. We're chipping in with, with goals now. This is a lot more promising going into that final season. The only disappointment I think there is Anquetti. Only five goals and four assists. 6.92. He has to play in that role as yeah. his favorite role. Hasn't really performed. Well, I don't know. But we only have one season left. What are we expecting for that final season, do you think? Let's go for fourth. Fourth? Yeah. Getting in the top four, Let's getting Champions League. Champions League. That's what that's what I really would like. Yeah, to ending on Champions yeah. League football so that obviously Patreon members can have a chance in the Champions League if you take it on. And also I want a nice, healthy, light target hit of 1,000. Give me 1,000 yeah. likes, please. First signing in the door then, Alexander Jiku. I think our biggest weakness was our centre-backs. Now, we didn't get given a lot of money again. No. But what we did have was the option to sign this guy uh, on a... a tr he was transfer listed, so we did pick him up for a very cheap cost of only 650k. Now, I've played with this guy at Strasbourg before when I did a Strasbourg Youth to Go. I think he's quality. He has some really good attributes, especially mentally, like bravery, concentration, that we mentioned earlier. Uh, decent at uh, heading the ball, and he's only six foot. That's the only trouble that I have with him. Jump reach of 12. Yeah. But he is pretty much the best that we can get, really. You take him, he's... He well experienced so yeah he's definitely an improvement and yeah. i think the trouble is players that have been leaving which obviously you haven't been seeing because of um it doesn't show up on the transfers out but players who have been leaving retirement wise we've had a couple of retirements uh from the defend from defenders yeah so having to bring in i mean we've got a few players there that you might recognize that we've had to let go on freeze but we have brought in other players too again more players leaving on free transfers we have brought in two players. One of them, Chucho Hernandez. Obviously, he scored a couple of bangers the other day for yeah. Watford. Yeah. Uh, we've picked him up on a free transfer. And we spent £2.6 million on Pavlovich from Leon, who starts off at Monaco. Um, so we have actually used him in the previous Monaco rebuild. Again, very much similar to Jiku. He has some very good attributes. But what Jiku didn't have was that strength in the air. He has 15 strength, strength yeah. 17 jump and reach, and, and he's 6'4". And he's a lot younger, so he can do the dirty work. Exactly. Uh, so I'm hoping they make a nice little combination yeah, there yeah. at the back. So that's our two signings and Jutro Hernandez that we've made. Uh, let's take a look at the tactically then. So we're playing very much the same, Mara and Inquetti playing in those two roles again. And if we take a look at the best 11, it does put Pavlovich and Juku at the back with each other. And everybody has fantastic combinations that they all love to see. Yeah. I think this is quite a good team. I yeah. must say, I think this is quite a good team. There are some disappointments, like for instance, Suarez hasn't really developed into what I would expect after a couple of years, but we haven't really played him that much. Collado and Stengs, like Stengs, we struggled to fit him in. We can't fit him in. I've tried even selling him. Yeah. Uh, we could not get any money for him. So because we don't obviously play with wingers now, he has missed out. Uh, Clayson as well, who's who's not even out. He's not even in contract. He's out of contract, as you can see. But he is like 34 maybe yeah. now, 33. But he's just sticking around. Yeah. But, Hey, squad player, I guess. And Collado is just coming off the bench. When every you're now in the then. European, when you're in the European competitions, though, you you do need that squad. Need a big squad yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think we'll be relying quite a lot on calling up youth academy players too, because there are a few who are doing really well. For instance, Profacio, not bad. Hasn't developed that well, but yeah, not bad. So let's take a look then at competitions. We are in a group with Sevilla, Antwerp, Maccabi Tel Aviv. We've got to qualify. For yeah, them. got to That's qualify. That's 100 definitely. Yeah. Right. And if you take a look at the league, we are currently top. We have won all four, four. games so far. Ooh. So let's take a look at our schedule. Look at this. 2-0 against Lens. What's going on here then? 3-1 against Nantes. That's a nice result away from home as well. Yeah, 3-1 against Lorient and a 3-1 against Monaco. They were scoring a few good goals as well, haven't they? And, and they scored one, late. Their one was only, yeah, late goal as well. Look. Very late goal. Um, and it does look like Omar Rich has got sent off and we might have like scored from a free kick or something because yeah. he got sent off 95th, we scored 96. So that's a very good start. Definitely, we even yeah. like beat teams like Inter Milan in, the, in a friendly. Ooh. So yeah, I'm expecting big things in this season. I think we've done well. We I secured think, defense. I think fourth is looking Fourth is looking very achievable good. now, isn't it? Right, okay, let's simulate this final season.
So the final season, we did get fourth. We got get third, in. in fact. Get in. So that actually is lucky because now fourth place doesn't even get Champions League football. Hey, we weren't far off finishing runners up. We weren't. One, One point, point behind PSG. Despite them having Erlen Haaland and Neymar and Hakimi <laughs> still there and everybody else, like some of the best players in the I world. Mean, that, that's off to Monaco for winning the league. Again, we, yeah. We were there. We were there. We were I mean, pushing. How Monaco have won the league, and yet I can't see any of their players on yeah. here, other than Benoit Badiashile, who we know is good and defence, and Sofian Diop getting player of the matches. I mean, they must just have a really good defence. Yeah. But then at the same time, Donnarumma's got 15 clean sheets, so God knows. We've I mean, had you, the most yellow cards. You look at the goal difference mile, for, the, for the top three teams, look, compared to the team that finished fourth, look. Yeah, so massive. That, it's massive, yeah. That's, that's where you're winning. You know, when you win games and you're scoring goals, that's where you deserve to be then. Yeah, we've basically become the best of the rest. Yeah. Which I think as a as a five year goal at the start of the rebuild, you take five you take out for five years. Yeah, definitely. You, I wouldn't expect to be higher than them. No, no, no. Than no. two teams there. No, no. And we won a cup, yeah. French Cup. Yeah. So in that five years, I think we've been very successful. But this season isn't over yet. No. We haven't on. checked how we've done in Europe. Come on. Well, knocked out the second round by Borussia Dortmund of all teams. And the quarterfinals are by Angers again. It's our, it's our bulky side there, isn't it? It's always them, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Arsenal went on and beat Inter Milan in the final 5-3. If only we got to the final, we yeah. would have beat Inter Milan. We beat them in a friendly 2-0. Yeah. We would have been absolutely fine. So, yeah, they've, tr they've, they've won back-to-back, -back, well, two... Uh, as well as Manchester United in the uh, Europa League. All right, so that's not bad at all. Let's take a look at squad-wise then. Goals, 36 from Brenner, 24 from Seiko Mara, yeah. and Sione's got 15 as well as Anquetti has finally chipped in with 13. 88 goals in four, four players. That's four good, players, not bad. Yeah. Um, look how good he is. This is disgusting how good this player is. Uh, he's just developed into an absolute monster and he's only 20 years of age. So, yeah, you've got you're to taking him, him on. You've got to keep him. You've got to try and keep him. That's yeah. the big trouble, really, that you're going to have. But look how many greens that we have there for overperformers. That's why we've done so well this yeah. season. Everybody's chipping in. Even bench players are coming off the bench and doing very well indeed. If you're not even playing that much, you're still playing really well. Yeah. That's what's really crucial for us. It's a happy squad. Yeah, very really happy squad. And that's what happens when you get an happy squad. Yeah, it? only a few people that are like very unhappy who wants to leave or wants new deals but that's only because obviously when I simulate I can't offer them deals no. throughout the year so that's the only trouble there so let's take a look at finances then the, you are in the red unfortunately if you do take this on but you do have a debt of 32 million pounds left but now you're in the Champions League it should start to clear yeah that's the important thing we haven't had that as a as a, as, a, as a luxury yet as having that Champions League money mm. it's so much more than Europa League yeah. or Euro oh, Cup 2 what we've had the, the television rights and all that and it's, it's just so much bigger isn't it yeah you only have £5 million pound though in the transfer budget so it's still a challenge it still really is a challenge yeah. you've got a good team but you haven't got a lot to build with so what is the goal for this for the next five years do you think do you think winning the league is achievable in five years no I don't you don't no I think the best thing you can you can achieve really is trying to stay in that top three. Yeah, in that third or fourth position to, to keep you in the, the Champions League. So each season you're getting that little bit of more money from the Champions League, and then hopefully you can get into the the um, the playoff. Yeah, the playoff, the knockout stage. Knockout the, stage of the, 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 the Champions, Champions League. League. Because, I mean, I'm, I don't expect you to go any further than that, but to get through the league spaces of the Champions League, yeah. you've got good money then. Yeah, I'd say again, a couple of seasons it would take to do that. Yeah, so that's what my challenge would be, really. Yeah, for five to years try and, then. Try and stay into that top four to get yourself into the Champions League each season. Try getting that debt down, and then hopefully you might just... Reach the knockouts. Yeah, but you might just take a cup, get a cup. The French cup, cup every now and then. Because like. if you're getting into that, if you're, getting into, if you're staying in the top three or four, You've got a good squad. Yeah. You've always got a chance then. Exactly, yeah. And PSG our, get eliminated. What's our bulky side? Angers. Stay away from Angers. That's, no, that's my biggest challenge. You've got to beat them twice yeah. in one season. <laughs> <laughs> they have been so bad for us. It's yeah. been unbelievable. So there you have it. That is your task across the next five seasons from Dad. For all you Patreon members, thank you to everybody who's been signing up recently or for everybody who's been supporting for a long period of time. You've really helped me financially and it means I don't have to potentially look for a new part-time job. So I really do appreciate that, keeping me so I can upload as much as possible for you guys to watch uh, on here on YouTube. Dad, thank you very much for watching. Remember, 1,000 likes if you can, that would be amazing. Also, there's new Patreon polls every week for the new teams. 
The one previously, I mean, I haven't actually done it yet, so I don't know how controversial it's going to be, but it's Celtic versus Rangers. Ooh. That's going to cause a lot of chaos. Oh, oh. I'll tell so, you what, I watched the Celtic Rangers game this weekend just gone. fiery, wasn't what it? What a game. It was fiery. Yeah. That rebuild will be coming out. Well, whoever wins in two weeks' time, next week is Sevilla relegated Ooh. from the Villarreal save. So that's... That'll be 15 years into the future at that yeah. point. There's no like real players left almost. So those are the next two rebuilds coming your way and check the Patreon poll for the one in three weeks time. But thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next Monday. Bye-bye.